best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I hope you're having a great day doing whatever it is you're doing. Um, here is a question I've thought about a lot too, and I've talked about this with uh, a handful of creators. And uh, well, we'll get into that. So the question goes, hey Perch, I haven't used Twitter since 2020. But one thing I remember that confused me was users would tag writers in a post where they had a scan of a comic from a pirate site. Sometimes the logo of the pirate site is even in the screenshot. Uh, Read Comics Online is, is a classic one. I see that all the time. Part of the reason there, in fairness, is that um, uh, Google Image Search will pull those. So when I'm doing a video... Um, sometimes when I'm trying to grab a panel from something, I'll go to Google image search. I'll do a, a quick look on whatever topic I'm going to talk about. And then, um, you know, I, I, the end, but I have to look closely because it will pull images from those sites and I do go then go through and crop it out or do it. Right. I just don't want to give any publicity, but, but anyway, it's, uh, that that's part of the problem. I know, I know a couple people have gotten caught by that. And so that's been an issue. Um, anyway, but uh, but this continues. Um, but a few, very few pros complained, and some even retweeted them. It was especially weird to me, given 2020 was a year of hardship for the industry. It seemed like insulting that people would shamelessly post pirate site images to the very creators they were ripping off. Any time a thread of this gets going, it's lacking comic writers. Although I know us artists care a bit more, and usually five minutes in. It's dominated by people saying they can't afford comics, uh, and it's toxic to gatekeep. And it's and it's like since uh, when is <laughs> opposition to piracy gatekeeping? I can't imagine with all the spicy Twitter posts that the very writers who would call actual customers Nazis would think criticizing piracy is a step too far. But far more energy goes into demonizing customers than theft of your work. Okay, I've wondered this too, um, and it's true. I, I think that, so I, I think a number of things are going on here, and I think that you kind of hit on the, the core part of it. Uh, the message got out pretty aggressively uh, that, uh, you know, a lot of the fans on Twitter and on social media, um, particularly ones that would really be vocal, okay, really, really talk, uh, and were you know, in support of a lot of the creators, especially the newer creators. This is something that I think really emerged around 2018 or so, uh, because comic piracy has been going on for a long time. Um, I've just noticed, uh, here's the interesting part. All right. And then I'll try and do this without kind of giving too much free press to, to pirates. Um, but there's a, a well-known person who scans, um, under name Nemesis, and he, he will put up his comics on torrent sites and you can download them and, and you know, you, you do it that way. And as I've said before, I know a number of people who just download the entire library of everything coming out this week and, and they read it. But they, you have to go through a very small amount of hoops in order to make that work. You have to have a uh, torrent client. You have to have there's just some there's some pieces that you have to do that make it slightly more difficult. Um, I think any anyone who's mildly technical can figure it out, but it's it's not as straightforward. And then there's sites like uh, Read Free Comics, um, and that site is is literally just posting the images. So you search for the comic, and then it comes up, and you click it. You don't download anything. It's uh, you know, and in some cases, depending on the browser search you're using, you can search directly to that comic. So if, you know, it, it's that those are kind of two different forms of piracy. Now, the first one has been around for quite some time. I could give you an exact date, but I remember first hearing about this back in, God, I want to see like 2005 or 2006. It, it had been, it, I'm sure it, it existed before then, but it had been around for a while. Some of these online sites where the comics are just up and available to read through a browser are newer inventions. And that I think, I, I, again, I'm not sure exactly on the date, but I know it got popularized more around 2016, 2017. And so my theory is that the people who are downloading the comics, the people who are actually going through the more difficult uh, method, were people who are probably a bit more uh, traditional comic fans. They weren't casual comic fans. They were probably people who um, were buying a lot of comics and then kind of went to this method or a little bit more early adopter geeky people. 
And then I think the people who are going to the browser is more of the very casual, more of the social media fan. That's the kind of person who sees a tweet from a creator saying, you know, look, uh, is this, this big exciting moment happened here where Elektra became Daredevil. And people will run to that site and just read the comic on, you know, through the browser. They'll do it that way. Uh, I think there's a difference in customer or a difference in fan there. I think the fan in the second case is somebody who's not really a traditional comic buyer, not somebody who's who uh, has spent a lot of money on comics over the years. And I think that that person is probably more of the type that on Twitter and places like that tend to be more loud, more vocal, and uh, more ir- immediately militant when you start talking about comics, when you start talking about piracy. They're the ones who I think will immediately bring up the point of it's gatekeeping because people, you know, poor people should be able to read comics too. You're trying to exclude poor people from, you know, having a comic experience. Um, for what it's worth, I don't think that's, I, I think that's ridiculous, particularly in the world of webtoons and tapas and places where there are lots of comics you can get for free, and that is their business model. That's the entire purpose for how they work. When, you know, you do have Shoeisha putting stuff out for $2 a month, that's fine. You're not, you know, you are not entitled to read the latest Marvel comic at five ninety nine dollars just because you're poor. Um, that does not make theft okay. Under no circumstances does it make theft okay. And anyone who gives that reasoning to you is, is uh, they're, they're basically just trying to justify stealing it. I, I don't, again, there's, if you're, if your comment is people who are poor should be able to read comics, great. There's a million options for you. You shouldn't, you do not get all the options. If you're poor, but you can't first, you know, afford first class, you still don't get a fly there just because you're poor. You don't get to walk onto an airplane and say, you know what? I'm entitled to the seat. It's gatekeeping to keep me out of first class. I should sit here. You don't walk into a Tesla dealership and say, it's gatekeeping to keep me out of a Tesla because I can't afford it, so I'm just going to take one. That's that's not how it works. So, you know, again, I, not, not to be a big morality lesson around theft, it's just that's, that's a BS excuse. So I think that a, a number of the comic creators, particularly some of the newer ones who have entered the field, again, people who are 2015, 2016, kind of that era of comic creator, many of them you know, pirated the comics. Several of them have, you know, admit that, you know, they talk about in Twitter, like, yeah, when I was younger, I didn't have enough money. So I pirated the comics too. And so they, there's a little bit of, um, you know, and it's funny that they draw the line there, but a little bit of, I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I'm not going to attack somebody for, for pirating the book. Um, but I find it really strange. I mean, a really, really strange that creators, comic uh, writers, and you're right about this, artists do have a lot less tolerance for this. It is mostly the writers and the editors. And I'm blown away by the editors whose you know, draw, job is directly financed by getting these uh, comics printed and, and out and sold. I mean, arguably all of them are, but the comic editors, that is their business to curate this line. Um, I'm, fa- I'm amazed that if you are following of the wrong person. If you were following, I, I don't know, who was the, a while back, I remember somebody ran a, a block bot against, or blockchain bot. See, blockchain has multiple meanings now, so it gets confusing. Anyway, a block, a block space chain, and <laughs> there you go, um, against uh, just some guy. A uh, bunch of creators ran, and caught a bunch of people, and, they, and they're like, that guy is a, is a Nazi, and therefore all the people who follow that guy is a Nazi, and therefore everybody who follows that guy is getting, is getting blocked. They're, they're willing to take an aggressive, hard stand on that. But then, like you say, when somebody posts something with a screenshot with obvious you know, piracy in it, then they'll turn around and go, well, you can't attack the people who are stealing books because they're poor and you know they deserve it. That's very weird. It's a very, very weird take. Uh, if, if you're going to be a kind of hair trigger aggressive, like, you know, like, like, like Dan Slott, like Al Ewing, you know, very, very aggressive. You know, Mark Brooks is, has recently, so there's an artist uh, who has recently gone very aggressive with this kind of stuff um, against people saying the wrong things, doing the wrong, you know, we got to, 
we got to get rid of, you know, this hate group or that hate group, you know, just, just a lot of volume is given to that. But then piracy comes up and suddenly it's like, Ooh, I don't, you know, I shouldn't wade into that one. Or again, be very aggressive. I have known creators who have said I'm against piracy and been, been kind of aggressive with it. And they, they tweeted about that and other creators have messaged them and said, Hey, you should back off this. This isn't uh, you know, you're, you're, you're coming off on the wrong side here. Don't, don't speak out against piracy. That's, it's incredibly bizarre to me. I, I do not understand that take. I don't understand how you get there at all. Um, but it is, uh, it's, it's very baffling. But that's, that's, that's kind of my theory as to how it got there and kind of some of the factors involved. I wish I had an answer for you. Other than I would say uh, I've talked to, you know, at least a handful of creators who are very much against piracy, who are very frustrated by it and have the exact same question you do. They do not understand why people get really aggressive on one area and then, you know, give it a pass and or support it in the other. Um, make no mistake about it. You know, piracy hurts comics. It absolutely does. I understand there will be somebody in the comments who want to talk about, well, they buy all the books and they pirate because they don't want to open up the comic and they're still giving the money. And that's great. Good, good for you. Glad you're still paying for it. There's other people who say, well, I pirate first because it's so expensive and then I get the trades if I like it. And so I'm still putting money into the industry. Okay. Again, you know what it's, you're you. So whatever you want to do and whatever you want to live with is your business. Okay. Just to, you don't need to go too hard at defending it. You do, you do you it's fine. Um, but you know, it is, it, it is still theft. I mean, it is. And, and keep in mind, I again, people like to pull up various stats about how well it worked out for the music industry. I mean, sort of, there's a wonderful documentary out there that talks about how piracy worked out great for Apple. It worked out great for the new model of people who are doing, uh, who are doing music streaming and, and some of these services. It worked out very poorly for the old group. And so the complicated part of all of it was, you know, some of the old labels and some of the old distribution methods of music sucked. And so even though, you know, it was theft and even though it was a problem, you know, people were generally okay because the old model needed to change. It needed to be disrupted and piracy wound up being a forcing function that helped that happen. And it's like people come to the same conclusion. It, it was still theft. It just had an outcome that happened to be one that, you know, most people appreciated and liked when all was said and done. Right? Those things can all be true. All these things can be true. It's just, you know, it, 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 it if it quacks like a duck, it's still a duck. I mean, I, anyway, um, there's a lot of comics that get canceled or, I mean, again, if, if, if we really want to talk about what's saving the comic industry or hurting the comic industry, there's a lot of things that do it. Uh, piracy is not at the top of my list, but I think all the other things we talk about on a regular basis are far higher than piracy. Um, you know, but, but left unchecked, left as it is, it's not going to have a positive effect. I'll throw, I think I'm now trying to second guess all the comments I get. Oh, it's one more that will come up. It says, well, piracy was helpful for manga. Um, you know, no, I do. I don't agree. I think that that's not the main way manga uh, achieved its success. I talked about that on other videos about where it happened and what what happened, what went on there. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, manga did look at piracy. Uh, and they reacted to it. They took it and they built a strategy around it. But they did not do was go on line or Twitter or wherever and say, hey, you know, poor people deserve manga too. So, uh, you know, don't you gatekeep. <laughs> they didn't do that. They actually formulated a, you know, okay, well, this exists. So how are we going to deal with it? And that's, you know, the healthy, smart thing, mature thing to do. Anyway, thank you very much for the question. I uh, hope everyone out there is having a great day. And thanks for listening.